Hey guys, Relico here. Today I'll be doing another educational video. I'll be talking about range, effective range, and BB trajectory dynamics. Um, but let me start off with a question first. Does an R hop increase range? This is a question you sometimes see asked, and people sometimes think it's a silly question because the answer is obvious, yes. Um, but there's two things wrong with that because, first of all, it is actually a pretty good question, and secondly, the answer is not yes. We'll get into that. So to address this issue, we first need to define what range actually is. Um, there are two possibilities. One range could be the distance your BB flies, or it could be the distance at which you can still reliably hit someone. So to keep things simple, we are going to call this range, and we are going to call this effective range. Now this is a very important variable. It's, uh, it depends on your actual range, of course. It depends on your accuracy. It depends, uh, therefore, on your barrel. It depends on your bucking. It depends on the quality of your BBs. It depends on your air seal, your FPS consistency. It depends on so many things. This is actually very simple. It depends on only, well, a few variables, actually. So. Let's get into how that works. When your BB is fired out of the gun, the BB has backspin, so it rotates. Um, because it is moving forward and also rotating, it is subject to the Mag Magnus effect. Um, and the Magnus effect states that if an object moves and rotates at the same time, and it will experience a force upwards or, well, in any direction, depending on which direction the projectile is rotating in. In this case, there will be a force upwards. Of course, the BB will also experience a force downwards, which is called gravity. And, um, well, how far it actually flies depends on uh, how long these two forces are going to remain equal. So if these forces are equal to each other then uh, the BB will fly straight. If this force is greater than this one then the BB will go up. If this force is greater than this one then the BB will go down. Now this force, the Magnus force, depends on uh, the rotation uh, the BB has, so how many RPM, and it depends on the velocity, so the FPS if you will. Uh, this one solely depends on uh, the BB's mass uh, and well, possibly what planet you are on, but uh, let's assume we remain on Earth for now. Um, so this one isn't going to change much. This one, however, is um, because of two things. Uh, first of all, uh, when a BB moves forward, uh, it has a velocity, so there's some drag force on the BB in this direction, and that's going to slow the BB down. Um, the drag force, well, depends on the, uh, the frontal area of the BB, some coefficients, uh, and mainly the velocity. Um, well, because the velocity is variable, uh, this force is also variable, um, and it's going to uh, cause some deceleration of the BB. Uh, deceleration depends on th this force and the mass of the BB. So if the BB is very heavy, then it's not going to decelerate very quickly. If the BB is very light, then it's going to decelerate rather quickly. That's very important to keep in mind. Heavy BBs decelerate slowly. Um, the other one is the rotation. Uh, well, there's also something called spin decay or something. Uh, the BB loses a certain amount of RPM every second that it flies. But it's not too important in airsoft uh, dynamics physics, so we're going to leave it out of the equation for now. So, if for a given time period these two remain fairly equal, then the BB is over that time period going to fly relatively straight. If these forces are not very equal uh, and change are different to each other, then the BB is going to fly up if this one is bigger or down if this one is bigger. Um, and if these two change over the time period 
then the BB is probably going to do something which is a bit more realistic it's going to do something like this now in order uh, to shoot accurately, to shoot comfortably we want something like this because a trajectory that looks like this is a lot more favorable than a trajectory that looks like this um, also there's a certain amount of limitation that of range you can get with a trajectory that looks like this because if this happens over 30 meters or this happens over 30 meters um, then how are you going to hit something at 50 meters, 60 meters, 70 meters or something like that it's important to keep your trajectory as straight as possible um, so therefore it is important that these two forces change as little as possible since this one doesn't change it is important that this one changes as little as possible so if you want your BB to fly far then it needs to fly straight which means this force doesn't change much which means you need a heavy BB um, and that's the first big variable when it comes to determining the range you're going to get uh, the other variable is actually rather simple it's just the muzzle energy so the kinetic energy the gun the BB has when it's fired from the gun it's pretty un pretty obvious a bit of a no-brainer um, if your BB is flying faster and straight then it is going to cover more distance here then it's going to fly further um, so yeah obviously FPS has some influence on range but it is not as big as uh, the mass of the BB. A BB, uh, say a 0.3 gram BB, fired at 300 FPS or 500 FPS is going to experience a range difference of 10 meters or something probably. It's not that much. Um, so t those are the two main real variables influencing range. Um, but there's one more thing. Um, this whole thing assumes that the BB has enough backspin so um, you could get a very very heavy BB uh, the velocity is not going to change therefore the because it's so heavy uh, the inertia is so much that the Magnus force isn't going to change it's going to fly super straight um, and it will get very very far um, but there's the problem um, you need to be able to put enough backspin on the BB to lift that much weight um, so that's where the hop-up comes into the picture um, because a stock hop-up or a standard hop-up is not going to be able to put as much backspin on a BB as an R hop or a maple leaf um, so uh, if you want to use heavy BBs then you need a good hop-up um, or you just need to shoot hotter uh, because if the FPS is higher then you don't need as much backspin to still be able to lift it um, but generally speaking the heavier the BB the better your hop-up should be um, and that's where our hop comes into the picture um, because I started off the video by asking um, does an R hop increase range and since the mass and the velocity are the only two variables you should by now be able to have figured out that an R hop does not increase range. Um, but an R hop does really excel at putting a lot of backspin on a BB. So an R hop does allow you to use heavier BBs. If you can still use heavier BBs, that is. Um, so if you put an R hop in your gun um, and then put heavier BBs in your gun, then you are going to see an improvement in range. Um, but that is not because of the R hop. That is because uh, of the heavier BBs, and you can use the heavier BBs because of the R hop. So, um, to answer that question, does an R hop improve range? Um, actual range, technically, no. Um, but then there's the other thing, which is effective range. Um, and the effective range depends on the actual range and your accuracy. Um, so, it is the range at which you can. Uh, say uh, hit a man sized target 9 out of 10 times and um, an R hop does improve effective range even if you don't switch to heavier BBs because an R hop when installed properly is very accurate very consistent 
um, and accuracy is um, well accuracy plays a huge role in your effective range so installing an R hop is going to improve your effective range um, but then again you could also get a maple leaf or a flat hop which does something very similar um, and is going to provide a similar uh, degree of accuracy um, so you don't need an R hop for range per se um, but it will work obviously Now there's one more theory um, contributing to the uh, R-hop increases range myth, um, which is the wobble theory. And wobble theory states uh, that if you have a barrel with an R-hop in it, compared to a barrel with a stock hop-up in it, um, then if you fire a BB through it, then the BB is going to get backspin by uh, either the R hop or the normal bucking and it's going to get a certain amount of backspin and uh, when it leaves the barrel again so in both cases the BB is going to leave the barrel um, the backspin it has given is gotten from the uh, standard bucking caused it to wobble around and uh, the R hop apparently doesn't wobble around. Um, whether that is actually true or not, um, I don't know. Um, I think it is, uh, because this tends to be more accurate than this, but that's a different story. Um, but the claim is that when it leaves the barrel, it won't wobble around as much, um, and therefore this one will fly further than this one. Um, but that's uh, not true, because um, the range, as we discussed earlier, um, depends on the velocity, uh, the backspin, and the mass. So if the mass of this BB and the mass of this BB are the same, if this velocity is the same, and if the amount of backspin is the same, then these two are going to follow exactly the same trajectory, uh, depending on well, those variables, um, but that trajectory does not depend on what happened inside the barrel. Uh, they're already out of, out of the barrel, there are only three factors at play here. Um, so, it does not matter whether it wobbled around 100 times inside the barrel or whether it did not wobble at all, um, it's still going to follow the same trajectory. Um, obviously, if it leaves the barrel at a slightly different angle or something, and it is going to have an influence on your accuracy. Um, so it will influence your effective range. Uh, which kind of proves the already known point that an R hop is more accurate than a standard bucking. Um, but this is not going to fly further than this because it is fired uh, or lifted by a different mechanism. Assuming that the backspin is the same. And the same is true for uh, the barrel actually. Uh, there are barrels out there that claim to improve your range. Um, there are white bores and there's whole theories behind that. Um, but what happens inside the barrel does not change what happens to these variables in flight. Um, once these variables are set and once the BB is out of the barrel then um, the trajectory is already set. It's not going to change. It's already determined. Um, so barrels, uh, buckings, uh, anything on the other end of the gun are not going to influence what happens with these BBs once they're out of the barrel. So all of those variables do not influence range. They do, however, influence effective range. They do influence accuracy. A better quality barrel, a better quality BB is going to be more accurate uh, because it's going to follow more consistent path um, but it's not going to be able to fly further um, because it's not going to have some magic dust on it that suddenly defies the laws of physics um, the Magnus force is not going to be more constant because it was fired uh, through uh, some special barrel or something so special barrels or buckings or anything improving your range simply don't exist sorry
Um, now there is one more thing I would like to address because it has a theoretical influence. Um, in the model we had, we looked at uh, the BB as it had a as it had a velocity, some drag force, some magnus force up, and some gravity down. Um, and we assumed that this one is constant. Uh, this one depends on the uh, the velocity, um, and this one depends on the velocity as well. Um, actually, the velocity squared. Um, but that's not entirely true because this one depends on the spin, the backspin, the RPM as well. And I mentioned earlier that the spin does decay a bit uh, during flight. So if your backspin uh, decays quicker, then this one is going to go down quicker as well. Um, so what could cause a pellet? Uh, to lose its backspin quicker. Um, honestly, I don't really know. It's really hard to find uh, stuff on this kind of matter. Um, but I do have a theory, and that is uh, that the quality of the BB has some influence on this picture. Because when you look at a BB, then uh, the center of volume is here, and the center of mass may not be or is not the same as the center of volume. They may be very close, so this is very much exaggerated. But uh, the center of volume and the center of mass may not be the same. Um, so, if the BB rotates around its center of mass, um, then it's going to appear to be shaking a bit from, the visible, from a visible perspective. Um, because the center of volume and center of mass are not the same. And this probably has some influence on the amount of the percentage of backspin it loses every second. So, if your BB uh, has a center of mass and a center of volume that are not on the same spot, so if you have a poor quality BB, then it is going to vibrate a bit and it is going to lose its backspin quicker. Um, so, long story short, a better quality baby may fly a bit further um, than uh, a low quality BB. Um, but I've never really managed to observe this uh, effect to be big enough uh, in real life, so I don't know whether this is true. Uh, but, well, some theory does suggest it. So, to recap, um, we have range, range, which, range, which depends on uh, the mass, uh, the velocity, and well, the backspin. Assuming this one is enough, the range depends solely on the mass and the velocity. So. Uh, Bucking, barrel, everything does not influence range. Um, and we also have the effective range, which depends on the range, uh, the bucking, barrel, BBs, etc. So, um, of course, these variables are all very important. Um, and it is therefore important to upgrade your barrel, your bucking, your BBs, everything. Um, but it is not going to give you more range, it's just going to make your shots more accurate. Um, and I'm not saying that's important, but there is a huge misconception about it, that all these things inc influence range, improve range, which is simply not true.